today. Good day for the markets, but let's uh, focus on Embassy Office Park's REIT. Uh, the Q1 FI21 operational update, the Mindspace REIT um, files for an IPO, lots of talking points. Let's welcome on board then Mike Holland, the CEO at Embassy Office Park's REIT, joining in on the show right now. Mike, hi, good morning. Uh, with the recent update on the rental collections, appears as though most of the payments have come in for you. Uh, what were the pockets of worry though? Well, I, you know, I think the pandemic, which hit us right at the end of the last financial year um, and has impacted from April, May, June throughout the quarter, um, we operated throughout that period within the government restrictions that were allowed so that our tenants could have business continuity to serve their customers. Um, but clearly, um, that was on a skeletal basis in, in accordance with the various lockdown restrictions. That said, over 90% of our tenants did operate throughout the quarter. And in June, for example, the average was that there were 13,000 people uh, working in the parks. So different cities have different challenges um, and are at different stages of recovering uh, from the, the pandemic. But I think that the fact that we kept our side of our contractual agreement with our 160 tenants has been recognized by them that 97% uh, of the rentals that were due for the quarter have indeed been paid. So clearly our tenants uh, appreciated the work that our teams across the country were doing to keep business continuity going. Um, it's also a reflection of the type of tenant that we have, which is a large scale, generally international tenant base um, uh, that have needed to keep that business continuity going through the cycle. We've also seen increase uh, in our rentals for, I think, 22 different leases for about 1.8 million square feet. Uh, we've seen and secured 14% rental increases even during that pandemic period. So um, certainly not uh, not a business as usual quarter, but a, uh, a, a, a strong, uh, solid performance that shows the resilience actually of the overall uh, REIT model in the commercial real estate sector. Sure. Going forward, though, are there negoci renegotiations uh, which you suspect would take place or are they already taking place uh, with regards to tenants? Because, you know, buzz of new tenants opting out, especially in the IT sector. Can you clarify if there are any large exits from your portfolio at all? Yeah, so I think you have to understand the context of our type of business, our type of tenants. They are international companies that sign up for long-term leases. The, um, the typical uh, lock-in or average expiry in our portfolio is between five and, and seven years. So um, there isn't a, a sudden reaction to these types of short-term um, pandemics. We have a normal churn within our portfolio. We've consistently operated at over 90% occupancy in the portfolio. There will be, just as every quarter we announce new leases and new tenants who are coming into our portfolio, there will be exits. And it's a normal part of the churn of the business. You know, I did see a stat um, that was touted in one of the newspapers a few days ago that an IPC had reported that there had been 3 million square feet of exits um, in, in Bangalore. Actually, you have to put that into the context of the, the quantum of the market. Now, the Bangalore market is a 160 million square foot office market. It's been the largest take up uh, market in Asia for the last five years. So um, if you see a churn of a couple of percentage points in half of a year, that's really hardly newsworthy, actually. So, you know, we, we tend to focus on a medium to long-term aspect of where the market's going. Uh, one thing that is really crystal clear is that supply over the next couple of years is falling very dramatically because of the supply constraints that come from uh, both the capital requirements around uh, new construction works uh, but also on the labor side of things. We did some data on supply a few months ago. Six months ago, we were looking at 120 million square feet of new supply 
across the country projected over the next two years. Um, we believe that that number has now dropped to 80. So it, it's it's dropped by um, a, approximately a third uh, in terms of new supply. What will happen and what that will mean is that actually because many of the occupiers who are coming back are looking to de-densify their space, that when people start to come back, when people start to de-densify, we're going to see a constrained supply in the market, um, which is actually, of course, uh, only a, a good thing for um, companies like Embassy REIT. Uh, in this COVID time, we have seen the impact on the high-grade office space. Uh, is that expected to remain muted? Is there more pain ahead when it comes to further negotiation with clients? And I just want to club it with how you see this concept of work from home as well affecting the, you know, the business model in the long term. Or, uh, you know, as you mentioned, speak to us about the opportunity that you see from, uh, you know, de-densification. Yeah, so there's been a lot of um, discussion about the whole work from home uh, element and how that impacts the office business. I think it's really important to distinguish the typical office business in India from the way in which Europe and, and North America may, may look at that. You know, the demographic, the scale that we're looking at, the type of activities that are done uh, here in India are very different from the typical core office markets in Europe uh, and in the US, which tends to be um, downtown um, front office type of space. Um, you, you, you know we've got over 1,250 global capability centers here in India supporting international businesses all around the world. That's a very different type of office space type of user. And I think that the conclusion that we've come to around the work from home discussion and debate, and we've seen numerous surveys in India internationally, is that people do find elements of uh, work from home to be particularly challenging for the business, but people also like the flexibility. So we think that in the future, next couple of quarters, we're going to see people coming back to the offices high quality offices, de-densified offices, flexibility to have some level for work from home. The challenges around the physical elements of work from home are well documented. The issues about digital uh, challenges at home, particularly around issues of, of privacy, uh, which is very important for the, the international customer base. But not just those, there's also the issues of career, how do you build the business culture? How do you create an environment of learning for your young staff and young demographic? I mean, one of the beauties of, of working in Asia for 20 years is to work with people who have this, this I call it the yearning for learning um, that the young generation have in Asia and in India in particular. It's very hard to get that uh, from uh, in, a, in a work from home environment. So we see the office moving to be the core central space uh, that people will work at um, in a number of days a week, for example, that will be the base and that there will be, a, for certain roles, there will be a flexibility to be able to work um, either from home or from uh, other satellite offices. But fundamentally, again, we see that as working uh, and moving office demand towards the type of office provider that can demonstrate the safety and security aspects, which are clearly going right. to become super important going forward. Right, as right Mike. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. It's been a pleasure having you on board. Thanks much for giving us a better understanding as to what has been the impact on the rental collections as well as outlook for embassy REITs at a time when we are seeing this work from model, a work from home model, as well as what the outlook is in the rental collections. Let's slip into a short break. Come right back with more on the other side, 11,145 on the Nifty.